Faroe Island, a flat, desolate wasteland of spinifex that has been sleeping in the hot tropical sun for centuries, disturbed only by the cyclones that occasionally sweep in from the Indian Ocean. But the silence, which was once broken only by the cries of seabirds, is now being shattered by the roar of heavy machinery and the voices of men. Men who've come from all parts of the world and who are able to keep in touch with their homes through a well-established mail service. Air-conditioned cabins have been built. But the comforts of home are accompanied by household chores. Like the island itself, the native inhabitants were undisturbed for centuries. But they've accepted the intruders and now share the island and the new amenities with the men. Recreation facilities have been provided to relieve the austerity of the island. Day after day, for many months, men and supplies were flown in to the lonely island. Skilled technicians, parcels of delicate instruments, perishable and household goods, all were unloaded onto the dry red airstrip. And this flow of supplies must be maintained to support the community that has been set up. Those goods too bulky to be air freighted are transported to the mainland port of Onslow by road and then shipped across to the island in landing barges. What is the reason behind all this activity? Oil, for Barrow Island is the location of one of the largest known oil fields in Australia. Scores of wells have been drilled to tap this reservoir and at the completion of each well, the rig is carried on trucks to the next drill site. The oil at Barrow Island is found at around 2,300 feet. And as the drill chews its way down through the layers of the Earth's crust, each foot deeper is a step back in time. The oil-bearing levels were formed from the sediments of an ocean that covered this area long before man appeared on the Earth. Now, men searching for one of the most useful commodities of the present day are probing these levels that have remained undisturbed for millions of years. Oil plays a major role in the modern world and because of the continued depletion of known reserves, none of the crude oil can be allowed to go to waste. This cluster of valves and fittings, known as a Christmas tree, seals the well and regulates the oil flow. From the wellhead, the oil must be channeled through pipes 
to the separator station and then on to storage tanks. Hundreds of miles of pipes have been laid and with each new well another pipeline must be constructed and placed in position. Here at the separator station, any water, gas and foreign matter are removed from the crude oil. As a safety measure, the excess gas is burnt off. Each well is connected to the separator by its own pipeline and again the oil flow can be regulated and checked. After separation, the oil is pumped into storage tanks to await transport by sea to a refinery. Each tank has a capacity of 7 million gallons. A pumping station controls the flow of oil from the storage tanks to the tankers that call at the island. Because of large tidal variations and the shallow water around the island, tankers are unable to come close in shore to take on oil and must anchor well out at sea. The crude oil is pumped along a submarine pipeline to a buoyed terminal six miles offshore. After being coupled to the terminal, the tanker is secured against high winds and tidal movement by five anchors, each weighing 10 tons. From here, the oil will go through many processes before being transformed into a myriad of products, many of them essential to 20th century technology. And Barrow Island, dismissed as wasteland for so long, is a major Australian source of this precious commodity.